Tales of an Alpha Male, Volume 1. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Morris Much Show where we'll be doing storytelling. Yes, storytelling. Alpha. I think alpha you think first. Think alpha you think down. Think alpha you think the dude's got all the ladies in there. You know what I'm saying? They loving him and all of that. Who's one of my alpha type dudes I look up to and respect. None other than Mr. Todd Shaw himself, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, I opened up my group, Five Elements. Opened up for two short. It was 96, as you can see, October 19th. It was a Saturday, you know what I'm saying? Ticketmaster, you could have went and got some money and all that, woo woo, came on down there. Now, however, special guest was MC Bree. Now, I love Too Short. Bree, shout out to Flint, you know what I'm saying? Michigan, all that. Love Flint. However, this was a, a special event at Heart Bowls, cause, oh, this is my pass right here, you know what I'm saying? You had to get your backstage pass if you was performing that night. So I opened up for the guy, you know what I'm saying? I warmed it up. Then the pimp came in like, you know what I'm saying? You know how you do, Beep. they was going crazy. And I think the album was uh, Cocktails, was the album. And phenomenal album, by the way, Todd Shaw. And man, Bree came on though, you feel me? And he did his thing, you know, ain't no future in my fronting, you know what I'm saying? A lot of jams and, you know what I'm saying? He did that, I gotta get mine, gotta get mine. Shout out to Tupac, rest in peace. Free, rest in peace. And he made the crowd sing Pac verse. As you can see, that was 96. So Pac had just passed away. He might have been deceased three months. It's still fresh on us. But we was all Pac that night. The energy erupted. Mind on my money, money on my mind. Finger on my trigger, nigga, hand on my nine, smoking blunts and skunk, putting hoes and punks, and on the underground funk, bumping out of my truck. I live a life of a hustler, I act till I die. Let me calm down. Miss me with lies. Let me... I'm feeling the energy and the power, you know what I'm saying? Too Short came on with a white t shirt and some jewelry by himself. No hype, man, nothing, nothing. And ripped it. I heard all my jam. I heard Dauphine beat. He took it back to Born the Mac. <sighs> Too Short puts on a very good show. You know what I'm saying? I was happy to be a part of that. That was a, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to, you know, everybody who was involved with that show, man. Shout out to Harpos. You know what I'm saying? That was good times. But anyway, fast forward on the alpha tip, you know what I'm saying? This one right here comes from a certain alpha, you know what I'm saying, that, that we all love and respect in the Detroit area in the segment and all that. Ishan, man. Ishan gave us the opportunity to open up for him. St. Andrews, you know what I'm saying? Super live show. Like, I, look, Kenny, 112, where the players dwell, you know what I'm saying? When they came to the State Theater, it was pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? Was able to hang out with them guys for a minute. This one particularly, if I remember correctly, this is when the Wheat Bread crew, myself, Dilla, Proof, we, De La Soul. This was the De La Soul joint. Yeah, yeah, De La Soul, yeah. Plug one, two, and three. I'm talking about. Over here we have a bit of the wheat, the bread, that is, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to New York Connection, shout out to, uh, Armageddon, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Remember, you feel me? Shout out to my man Cricket. Shout out to a lot of them homies, man, that was putting stuff together, as you could say. Grand Quarters, Black and Quarters, Grand, grand Quarters. We, a lot of quarters, you know what I'm saying? Not them kind of quarters y'all be talking about, but yes. This was a super party. Five Elements was representing. I was in two groups. Five Ella, you know what I'm saying? We was doing our thing, but Wheat Bread too. Wheat Bread was the click. Fuck the dumb shit. What else we got here? You know what I'm saying? Oh! Now this was a backstage pass 
for my homeboy YG. Shout out to YG. YG designed this. This was a 96, you know what I'm saying? Motown, throwdown. This was the backstage pass. I don't remember where we were, where this was at. Exactly. Details are sketchy. However, you see this one. Yes, I was there. Yes. You see my name. What? Who I work for? Who's my dude? You know what I'm saying? Black owned businesses and all that. You now Shan, Maurice Malone. First time I ever went to Las Vegas. Magic show, 1996. I was there. Met Mike Tyson. There. At this party right here, I met none other than the grandiose Chuck D. For the first time. I wasn't even old enough to get in the club then, man. It was all of maybe 19. You know what I'm saying? 18. Getting ready to turn 19. Good times. Good times. Wow. Yup. Wheat bread back at it again. Five Ella back at it again. You know what I'm saying? For my man Jules, conversation piece. Shout out to Jules. DJ Jules, baby. Same dude. Right here. You know what I'm saying? He was at Mahogany Cafe. Cafe Mahogany, baby. Woo! Y'all don't know about that. Album release party it was real dope. Shout out to Skinny Boy Graphics. My man Dove. We do all our art covers and album covers and any other cover. Man, he'd cover your lyrics. You know, all our rhymes. Great hype man, all of that, man. That was a good dude. Shout out to Billy T. He used to really care. He used to do the Detroit Love shows back in the day. Kept us busy. You know what I'm saying? So, we were somewhere everywhere performing. Now, I just said St. Andrews. That was just a weekend thing. Then we had the bigger events. He said, bigger, bigger thing. You know, we had our little things we used to do Because all we did was rap, perform, make music Thousands of songs of masters Us, Five Elements, Wheat Bread Slum Village, Dilla uh, Phil Pop, rest in peace uh, Man, by 10, rest in peace You know what I'm saying Y'all just, man, look, keep going and on When Puffy, P. Daddy and the Family World Tour Jumped off, yes, this is my ticket stuff When they came That summer no, it wasn't. It wasn't a summer. It was a winter time. No, it wasn't a winter. It was a fall. It was November. November 9th. Biggie had job that year. So, man, that show was electrifying, man. P. Diddy, he, he threw down that night. You know what I'm saying? That's the first time I seen Puffy. And I'm talking about Mace and all of them was there. You dig? So now, while I'm on the subject of Puffy, first time I met P. Diddy, first time I met Mace, first time I seen Busta Rhymes in some kind of weird gown thing he had, African gown or something. Atlanta Live, shout out to Atlanta Live, I heard it ain't there no more, but Atlanta Live, you know what I'm saying, Detroit was in the house that night, we was deep, it was deep. I never saw a club like that where I thought I was in the club already because I was in the VIP. I didn't know I was in the VIP. I'm with my man T. Stucky. Who was there? Big Meech was there. He wasn't Big Meech yet. He was just Meech. And who was else was there? Uh, man, I think Southwest might have been there. Moan. Um, who else? I don't know, but we was deep. Puritan Avenue was in the... Yeah. And I'm a seven-mile nigga hanging out with them. You feel what I'm saying? So, seven-mile was in the house, too. And that was the, the time when I saw uh, P. Diddy and them came over to where we was at. Because niggas was, you know, we was draped up. Versace suits. And you know how Detroit players do it. Came over, spoke to us. And I noticed that they had a different kind of shine on them. I was like, damn, these niggas are shining. Like, you know. This shiny suit time and all that. But it was odd because they were shining because they had them like body paint, like gold body paint or like glitter or something. I don't know if this was an Atlanta thing. I don't know, you know, Atlanta do some different things with the fashion and all that. But Puffy and Mace, they came over to where we was at. And I was kind of reluctant to shake their hands because these niggas had gold glitter, like, like body paint. Like they had body paint on, then they put their suits on. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't like on, it didn't rub off. So, you know, I seen the homie shake his hand, Pooh shook, you know, P. Diddy hand first, and then, you know, whatever. And I looked, and I was trying to look at his hand, see if, you know, if that nigga went, you know, whatever. Nah, it didn't rub off. So I'm like, okay, all right, y'all, how y'all doing? Yeah, hey, what's up, man? Nice to meet you, man. You know, they kept it moving and all that. And I could remember later on, when we was getting ready to leave, the owner of the club came up to us because they was trying to figure out who we were. We ain't had no white records out yet. Well, we had the, the uh, what we have out? We had out the yesteryears at that time. But it wasn't selling like that. But they was coming up to us like we was selling Buku records and who was y'all and all this other type of stuff. So I think the Fantastic Volume 1 that just came out too. You know what I'm saying? We was on that joint too. But it wasn't pumping like that enough for them to like really be checking for us so the owner came over long story short and he was trying to flex you know oh man the chandelier costs fifty thousand. Oh man the such and such over here costs oh i'm gonna put up the new such and such in the ooh, ooh. so the homies got money you know? now, i seen them niggas with apartment apartment room bedrooms like money stacked from the floor to the ceiling like fifty thousand on a chandelier that wasn't impressing nobody however the owner kind of felt that, so he wanted to flex a little bit more. He had his big bodyguard dudes with his big no neck niggas, like, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, he was like, watch this. Oh, that dude over there talking to my girl. What do you think he doing? I guess one of the homies was talking to his girl. He didn't know that was the homie though. He went over to the two big no neck niggas and said, throw him up out of here talking to my girl like that. He flexing. So we didn't know who he was talking about, but he, you know, we listening. So he goes over and I think he grabbed Moan. They grabbed Moan. Moan wasn't going for that shit. So we was trying to tell him, look, no, nah, man, hold on, dog. You trying to flex and shit. He with us. The big no neck niggas had already sprung into action. So quite righteously, once they started putting hands on him, messing up his silk suit and shit and fuck, you know what I mean? Up my man gear. I heard somebody in the distance say, Detroit in the house. And it was like the place erupted. Like a, a riot just went off all of a sudden. Man. All I know is I seen, I don't know how Stuck was doing this, but he went over to the big nigga, he grabbed one big nigga, and it's like, he grabbed him, and I don't know if he like grabbed him and threw him and clipped him or tripped him, but this big nigga flew this way. The other no-neck nigga saw that, how he did his boy, he ran up, he swung up on Stuck, swung, Stuck did the sidestep, did something, and then this nigga, he did some kind of parry or something. Man, that big nigga went flying all the way over to the bar, hit his head, fell down. After that, look, man, it was like they formed a perimeter around Dime, myself, Proof, and Phil Pot. Because we don't be getting into this gangster shit like this. But, you know, they, of course, look, they was handling it. And by the time the, the, the melee was over, we were walking out the door. I don't know how the owner got his ass whipped or whoever he was all the way over to the door. And by the time we was leaving out, my man Phil Pot handed his hat to him like, oh man, you're going to need this, man. Like, it, man, it was embarrassing. We went outside. It was some shooting. Niggas jumping in the bins. T had the 600. You know what I'm saying? We got the gunning and man, got up out of there. I don't know if y'all was there, though. If anybody was there that got any rec recollection or can recall this night, in Atlanta, I want to interview on you on the Morris Mudd show because I've never seen a melee. And they was like throwing chairs like over the balcony. I know it was a balcony, man, and it was like chairs was going downstairs. Man, it look. Just saying, this this is one of them things. Gotta love it. It's crazy. It's hip hop and you don't stop. Stop the violence.